In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the power steering pressure line on this Dodge Grant Caravan. Let's get started. Underneath the vehicle, this is your power steering pressure line that we're after. Follow it and you'll see where it goes into the power steering rack on the back of the rack. The high pressure line, that's the one that we're replacing, is this one on the right side port. It's going to have an 18 millimeter fitting. So put your wrench on there. I recommend a flare nut wrench. Break it free. Hopefully yours isn't stuck. I don't have much room for a regular sized wrench in there. So I'm going to use these pliers and continue pulling the nut off with these. I also have a collection bucket ready to catch fluid. That's about to come out of here. I did not drain the reservoir because even if you do, there's still going to be a lot of fluid in the line and in the rack itself. So it's gonna make a mess no matter what. Remove this retainer that holds the two lines together, or at least pop it off of this line. Now you should be able to pull this out of the rack. There we go. All right, we'll let that drain slowly. While that's doing its thing, let's grab a 10 millimeter and remove the bolt that secures the line onto this bracket. Okay, this is starting to pull the whole stud out. The 10 millimeter nut is basically stuck from rust buildup. So I'm gonna push this back in. We do have to remove the stud, but I need to get the nut to break free first. Let's get a wire brush, clean those threads. Let's loosen this up. With that loosened up, there are two 16 millimeter bolts on top of this bracket here. We have to get both of those out because we have to pull this bracket upwards. Now this bracket can come up. You don't have to remove anything from here. You can just pivot this around like that. Now you need a 13 millimeter wrench so you can hold this. If yours is spinning like mine is, I'm gonna use my 10 millimeter socket on this. Bring this in a little. Hold this with your 13. Remove the 10 millimeter nut. Yeah, that was pretty tight on there. And now you can remove the 13 millimeter bolt. Following the line further towards the passenger side, you'll see another 10 millimeter retainer here. Now the line can come off. I'm gonna let it drain in my collection bucket. Follow the line and you'll see where it goes on to the power steering pump. That's gonna be a 16 millimeter fitting. So put your flare nut wrench on that. There we go. Once you break it free, you can even use a regular wrench. All right, it's out. Okay, now you can fish the line out from the bottom. And there it is. Now we have to get these brackets off so we can reuse them on the new line. The first step will be to pull the insert out of the bushing. It's just a metal sleeve basically that prevents you from crushing this bushing when you bolt it on. Take this, save it. You can take the bushing out now the bushing we will not reuse. We do have a new one of those. The easiest way to take these out is to just twist them. And this will break them free. They're also stuck because this bracket is rusty. There we go. Now you can take a screwdriver, spread this apart. Try not to bend it too much. Pull it off. All right, take this off as well. And now of course do the same to the other one. There are two of these brackets on this line. Now let's put the brackets on the new line. I'm just gonna put a little bit of silicone paste on here so that it can have some long-term lubrication and protection for this rubber bushing. Slide that over. Now take the bracket, get that to seat. 
just like this, and then you're going to want to close it up. Squish that together. And we do have a new bushing over here. Slide that in like that. And we have to get this to slide through. There we go. Let's do the same to the other one, and then we can install this on the vehicle. On this new line, before it goes in, make sure you install a new O-ring, which should be supplied with your line, and make sure your old one is out of the fitting up in the power steering pump up there. Also, I put a little bit of anti-seize right where the fitting sits here. This is just so I can hopefully prevent it from seizing in the future if this line ever needs to come out. It may or may not help but I like to do it regardless. Now carefully bring this line up. Make sure you don't get any debris in either of the two ends. Getting this to start in here might be a little tricky because of the angle. Try to get that fitting to start on the threads. The downside here is if it's not perfectly lined up, the, uh, the threads won't start and you definitely don't want to just jam it in there and cross thread it. That would not be a good time. And once you get it started, go ahead and thread it in the rest of the way. Oh, it's just bottomed out right there. So I'm just going to give it a quick snug. It does have that O-ring in there. <coughs> there we go. Snug it up. It's the O-ring that will seal up. It's not a flared fitting uh, with a seal. So don't crush it. If you crush it too much, it'll destroy the O-ring and it will not seal up. Now let's continue running this line. We'll put this bolt in here and uh, re-secure it. Make sure that's nice and snug. Now on this side, let's put this bolt through. It goes through the bracket on the line first. Then I'm going to bring this exhaust hanger down and slide it over this stud here. I'm going to start this mounting nut on. And then it had two bolts on top, which you can't really see. You have to kind of feel for the mounting holes and the threads. Drop the bolt in, thread it in. It should start easily. All right, and now I'm going to tighten the top bolts in first so that it pushes it down, and then I'll tighten this one. And then tighten up this mounting nut. Now on this end, make sure you put that new O-ring on this side as well. Start the fitting in. Make sure it starts on nice and smooth. This one isn't quite at the right angle. All right. It takes a while usually to find the right angle, but once you do, it should thread on smoothly. And now I'm just going to snug it up with my wrench. <sighs> nice and snug there. Now over here, clip this back on. Let's top off the power steering fluid and bleed the system. On the passenger side of your engine compartment, right where the air filter housing is, you'll see your power steering reservoir. Turn the cap counterclockwise and set it aside. There is some fluid left in here for me, so I'm going to drain it out and then I'll add new fluid. This takes automatic transmission fluid. Keep that in mind. I'm just using a turkey baster for this. If you have a fluid extractor pump, that's even better. Looks like my fluid wasn't too bad to begin with. Just going to wipe up my mess here. And then where you're going to fill the reservoir up to the full mark, actually a little bit past it because there will be air in the system with, once again, automatic transmission fluid. The system is not too big. If you just have a quart, that should be plenty. All right. Wipe up any drippage here so it doesn't continue going down. 
And now I'm going to turn the steering wheel left to right, lock to lock, which means all the way left to all the way right. With the engine off, what that's going to do is it's going to manually push fluid through the system. Of course, the power steering pump will not run, but you can still push fluid through it with the power steering rack manually moving. So I want to do that before I turn it on so that the power steering pump doesn't suck in air. That would be bad because it's aerating the fluid and also it can cause damage to the pump. I put a light behind the reservoir so you can more easily see the level of the fluid and with the front end raised off the ground so that the tires are freely floating in the air. I'm going to turn the steering wheel lock to lock, left and right. We're going to hopefully bleed most of the air out of the system this way. You don't have to go fast, you can just go slow, left to right. As you can see, a lot of the fluid went down. I'm going to top it off again and we'll do the same thing again. My fluid is at the perfect level right now, so I'm just going to clean off the leakage here, the spillage, cap it off, and now you'd want to do the same thing with the engine on. So turn on the engine, turn it all the way to the left, all the way to the right, lock to lock. If no more air comes out and the fluid remains the same, you're good to go. If not, top it off and, well, do it again until it stops bleeding air out. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.